cat vertebrae. Let's start. The cat has all five regions of the vertebrae. It has seven cervical vertebrae, 13 thoracic, seven lumbar, three sacral, and a variable amount of caudal vertebrae depending on how long or short its tail is. Vertebrae will almost always have several recurring features regardless of which region you actually look at. These cylindrical bodies right there, those would be the centrum or the body of your vertebral segment. This big asshole right there, those will be your vertebral or neural or spinal canals. Your neural arch is this whole thing on top of the centrum that encloses your neural canal. The ones here at the side, that would be the pedicle of your neural arch and the ones at the top forming a bit of the roof maybe and a bit of the sides that would be the lamina of the neural arch these things at the top you'll find them in almost all vertebral regions except maybe for the caudal region and the atlas it's the dorsal projection of your neural arch and that would be the neural spine or the spinous process these things here those are known as the transverse processes you'll also have the articular surfaces which are the apophyses for example your pre-zygopophyses post zygopophyses at the back as long as you know where they are you can have an idea of which side is dorsal which side is ventral which side is anterior and which side is posterior so the cervical vertebrae we mentioned that there are seven of them and the first two look really different from the remaining five the first one is what we call the atlas the second one is the axis these five would be your typical cervical vertebrae what you're seeing right now is the dorsal view of the atlas and this is the ventral view and this is the anterior view and this is the posterior view. The atlas is described as a ring-shaped bone. These lateral projections right here, these are known as your transverse processes. Right there on both sides, goes through and through, and that, that hole is what we call the vertebral arterial canal, or the transverse foramen, neural arch. It's just a low and flat arch. And you're going to see this hole, and that is what we call the atlantal foramen. It is found on the dorsal side of your atlas, this, the atlantal foramen. Whereas your transverse foramen is found more on the ventral side. Atlantal foramen on the dorsal side, and then your transverse foramen on the ventral lateral side. These are your pre-zygopophyses also known as your cranial articular process. And this is the one that articulates with the occipital condyles of your skull. And if you have pre-zygopophyses, of course, you have the post-zygopophyses. And these will articulate with the axis. How do you know which one is which? Look for the transverse foramen. If you see the transverse foramen, like right in front of your face, then the articulation next to that is the post zygopophysis. The bottom of your atlas is called the hypocentrum. It is also called the ventral arch. You might be able to sort of feel a bump in the middle and that is called the ventral tubercle. This next bone right here is the axis and we are looking at it from the lateral view. This is the dorsal view. This is the ventral view. This is the anterior view. And this is the posterior view. This whole thing right here is the neural arch. And it projects upward to form your neural spine or your spinous process. We mentioned about the centrum, but at the front, it kind of looks weird. It kind of looks like a point. And this is called the odontoid process or the dents. Right next to your odontoid process, you have these shiny articulations here. Those would be your pre zygopophyses. This one articulates with the post zygopophysis of your atlas. This part right here, and this part right here, those would be your post zygopophysis. These will articulate with the next cervical vertebrae. If we look at the axis laterally, we're going to see this structure. If we look at it ventrally, that's what it looks like. These are the transverse processes or the pluripophyses. And that hole right there is called the transverse foramen or the vertebral arterial canal. 
So if you don't want to have a tongue twister, just say transverse foramen. You can see it also posteriorly. That will be that goes through and through to here. And of course, this big asshole right here, let's not forget that is the neural canal or the vertebral canal. We now have the five typical vertebrae. This would be your centrum. Of course, this big asshole is your neural canal. This whole thing is your neural arch, neural spine, spinous process, prezygopophyses, dorsally, facing dorsally, postzygopophyses, facing ventrally. And again, how do you know which one is pre, which one is post? Always look at where the articulating surface is facing. If it is facing dorsally, if it's facing upward, then you know that you're looking at the prezygopophysis. And therefore, this is the anterior side. And this would be the caudal side because the post zygopophyses are facing ventrally. Pleuropophysis or transverse process. And the hole that they form, that is the vertebral arterial canal or the transverse foramen. These three, they all have the transverse foramen. This one also has transverse foramen. However, this one, this last one, and that is how you know that this is the last cervical vertebrae, it does not have the transverse foramen. The cat has 13 thoracic vertebrae, in which the last three look very different from the first 10. Let's take one out, ooh, and have a closer look. Centrum, this is your neural canal or vertebral canal. This is the neural arch, which has a very long and tall neural spine. Then you have your prezygopophyses here at the top. And then you have your postzygopophyses at the back. Transverse processes. In this case, these are called the diapophyses. I'll show you later why. And then you have your parapophyses here at the side of your centrum. They're also known as demifacets or half facets of the centra. We mentioned that the transverse process is also called the diapophysis. That is because, if you remember from our discussion from earlier, a diapophysis and the parapophysis are the ones that articulate with the two heads of the rib. We have a rib right here, and it kind of joins like this. Hence, this part is what we call the diapophysis because it joins with the tuberculum of your rib. And the parapophysis, the one here, or the demifacet, or the half facet, that is the one that joins with the capitulum of your rib. So if we have a closer inspection of your thoracic vertebrae, let's look at it ventrally. I'll explain quickly why the parapophyses are also called demifacets or half facets. So the facet that articulates with one capitulum is actually formed by two vertebrae. You get half the facet in one vertebrae and half of the other facet in the next vertebrae. The one that is located posteriorly is the caudal costal fovea, and the one that is located anteriorly is also known as the cranial costal fovea. All of these rib facets, you can call them costal fovea, even the ones for the diapophysis. Costal fovea, the half facet here is the cranial costal fovea, and the one at the back is the caudal costal fovea. If we look at the last three vertebrae, the main differences would be that the neural spines are a lot less tall. If you look at the top, these would be the prezygopophyses of this vertebrae, which articulates with the other thoracic vertebrae here. But it kind of projects really tall so these are what we call mammillary processes, or they're also known as metapophyses. And then the ones here at the side, these are not the post zygopophyses. As you can see, they don't articulate with the next vertebrae. They just kind of stick out like so. Now these are called the accessory processes or the anapophyses. The post zygopophyses are the ones here at the back at the top. Now, how do you know that they are still thoracic vertebrae? Because they look very similar to lumbar vertebrae. It's kind of like a hybrid, you can say of both, in that the top part kind of now starts to look like the lumbar vertebrae because they now have the mammillary and accessory processes or the meta and anapophyses. If you look at it ventrally, you'll see that there are still rib facets. 
That's because the false ribs are still attached to these points. This vertebral segment that I'm holding right now is the lumbar vertebral segment, and the cat has seven. Let's identify the recurring structures. Centrum, neural canal or vertebral canal, neural arch, this is the lamina at the top, and the pedicles at the sides, spinous process or your neural spine, these guys projecting anteriorly these are your transverse processes they are also known as pleuropophyses because they're actually the transverse process plus the embryonic ribs pre zygopophyses here at the back posteriorly you have the post zygopophyses one of the characteristics of lumbar vertebrae is that they have these two things your pre zygopophysis actually has this mammillary process, also known as the metapophysis. Ventral to your post-zygopophysis, or right below it, you have this extra process, and that is the accessory process, or the anapophysis. You're going to find this in almost all lumbar vertebrae, except for the last two. The anapophyses are gone. What I'm holding right now is known as the sacral vertebrae. In the cat, it's a fusion of three sacral bones. So what kind of delineates one vertebra from the next would be these holes, which are the dorsal foramen. And you can also see ventrally there are actually a bit of sutures here, and then you're also going to see the ventral foramen. Most cranial segment has these very large and wide transverse processes. This is the one that mainly articulates with the ilium of your pelvis. These lateral projections, they're sometimes called fused pleuropophyses. This face right here is sometimes known as the auricular face or the articular surface. Centrum projection is sometimes called the promontory. Spinous processes, the neural spine here at the top. This is also known as the median sacral crest. And then at the sides, these ones, that would be your intermediate sacral crest. They're actually the fused zygopophyses. Then you have this whole part at the side laterally. That is the lateral sacral crest. The spinal canal or the vertebral canal is also known as the sacral canal. Pre-zygopophyses here. The post-zygopophyses, this will articulate with the caudal vertebrae. The last type of vertebrae would be the caudal or the coccygeal vertebrae. For the most part, as you move caudally, you don't really get to see the neural canal spinous processes. Almost often, it's just the centrum. And then maybe at the ventral side, you're going to see a few bumps, a few projections, which are called the hemal processes. Another part of the axial skeletal system would be the ribs, as well as the sternum. In your cat, your ribs are generally divided into two main portions. This is the bony vertebral rib. So it's called the vertebral rib because it sticks to the vertebrae. And then this is the cartilaginous sternal rib because this is a part that sticks to the sternum. You can also call these costal cartilages. In cats, there are nine pairs of true ribs, four pairs of false ribs. A true rib is one where it individually attaches to your sternum. So when we say false ribs, that is because they don't attach directly to the sternum. Among those four pairs of false ribs, the first three pairs, instead of sticking to the sternum, they attach to the other ribs. And the last pair of false ribs does not attach to the sternum nor to the adjacent ribs. So it just kind of attaches to the vertebrae. And so it's also called the floating rib. If you look at the rib, it is described to be bicipital, which means it has two heads. The more dorsal head is known as the tuberculum, while the more ventral head is the capitulum. In between the two heads, this narrow part here, that is the neck. The capitulum articulates with the cranial costal facet and the caudal costal facet of two successive thoracic vertebrae, while the tuberculum articulates with just one costal facet of the transverse process. The costal facet of the transverse process, or this whole thing, is called the diapophysis, while your demifacets can also be called your parapophysis. Here, 
would be the shaft. This part is known as the angle of the shaft. So that's kind of where it forms that, that really huge angle. The last three do not have a tuberculum. So there is no tuberculum because of course, if you see the last three segments here, there are no diapophyses to attach to. The costal cartilages of your ribs attach to this ventral bony structure here, which is called the sternum. It's commonly called the breastbone. The most anterior part is known as the manubrium. Kind of looks a bit like the tip of an arrow or the head of an arrow. The next segments, singular sternibra, plural sternibrae, the whole set is the body of the sternum. Finally, this most caudal part of your sternum is also known as the ziphy sternum. In younger cats, you're going to see some type of cartilage at the tip, and that is sometimes called the ziphoid process or the ziphoid cartilage. And as the cat grows older, it ossifies and turns into bone. And we're done! Oh my god, we're done with the review! We're done! Oh no, we're done! Oh my god, we're so done! And that is the actual skeletal system. What's really important is if you're given a pile of bones like these, you should somehow be able to pick out which one is thoracic, lumbar, sacral, cervical. All you really have to do is take note of which bones have which features. That way you won't be confused when they're all jumbled up together like this and you're like, oh my god, so many bones! <laughs> We're finally done with the actual skeletal system. For the next part, we are going to be moving on to the appendicular skeletal system where we will be exploring the pectoral girdles and the forelimbs as well as the pelvic girdle and the hind limbs. Peace out!